Hello there my friends, welcome back to another video. In this video we're going to be examining an external filter and it's going to be the Fluval 207. I have had this filter for a good year but it's been running on this five foot aquarium for about six months. I set it up in mid-February this year, 2020. So by now the filter has had a good opportunity to mature anything that would have gone wrong should have gone wrong already and equally it's a good time now to have a look inside to see the state of it. Now I've only cleaned this once since setting it up, once in six months. I don't tend to clean external filters that often because I don't see the need for them to be cleaned as often as I would do an internal filter. So we'll get the filter unplugged, get it out and we'll see exactly how this filter has performed. You might notice I haven't cleaned the filter, this isn't a setup video literally haven't touched this filter probably for three months this is how it has been sitting in this corner and this is raw we're going to see how it is and how it has performed so i'll just unplug it and then we can disconnect the pipe work using these levers this is one of the things i like about this filter is just how easy it is to get out you can get access to it and clean it really quickly and there we go the water stays within the pipe work because of these valves so obviously the first test of durability would be the fact that these o-rings aren't leaking there's been no water seepage and also we haven't had any water seepage around the main o-ring in the filter so we haven't had any failures in terms of leaking which is good and that can happen within six months of some filters the o-rings start to go because the oils um, sort of disappear and the o-rings start to dry but no such problems in this filter give her a little clean up quickly and then we'll have a look at what this filter's made from I have taken all the water out, that's kind of standard procedure. So this filter is made from entirely plastic. You can see that because bits of the filter come off when you give it a good scratch. And then this grey stuff is slightly different, but it is plastic as well. It's slightly more of a rubberized plastic, uh, a lot harder as well. It feels a bit harder than the black stuff. You can see there, it's a lot harder to actually cut this than the black stuff so this is certainly a harder and more durable plastic which is kind of what you want on the moving parts the canister itself isn't really going to do a lot of moving whereas the plunger and the handles you would expect them to be moved a lot more so you're going to want something that's a little bit more durable can take a little bit of flex and a little bit of movement so it doesn't break interestingly on the bottom there is rubber so this is for stopping the vibration. You can see it's quite soft and that helps with any of the noise that you would get from the filter. A lot of filters don't have this and actually they vibrate a lot once you set them up and get them going. You always hear a buzzing noise and this helps to mitigate that quite a lot. So we'll open it up and have a look. It's really easy to open up with the two handles. You just push them down like that on either side and that releases the entire head. You can see the debris that's built up over the last couple of months, probably three months since I've opened this up, but it's not too bad. I've opened a lot of filters and you get a lot more gunk in there than this. This part here is a really rubberized material and then you've got another rubberized material around the outside and then that lifts off to reveal the impeller. Now impellers are probably the most common places where filters actually break. If there's anywhere in a filter that's going to break, it's going to be this impeller. And the reason being, it's the only part really that moves within the filter. We'll go ahead and take the impeller out and have a look at how it's holding up. I normally recommend you use a pair of tweezers because the magnet can be quite strong and it's really hard to grasp it with your fingers. In terms of the impeller, it looks in pretty good shape. I always recommend that you give your impeller a clean every now and then. All you really need to do is get a towel and just give it a wipe over. And this is kind of what you want to see on an impeller. So there's no scoring on the actual magnet itself. And that means that we know no grit and bits of rubbish has got into the impeller housing itself. But also that the magnet is uh, decent quality, decent hardness and isn't wearing away. One of the things that can happen with these magnets is they can get scored and then they start to friction and then they can actually expand and that's how a lot of them get jammed. Also 
the reason you clean the debris off is to stop a similar thing happening all of the gunk that builds up in these impellers can cause friction and then eventually stop the impeller from spinning freely uh, another thing to check is the fact that the impeller locks in place and it does so that means the impeller is perfectly fine and working we've got the ceramic shaft in here ceramic doesn't rust which means you can use this in salt water which is what i have been doing in terms of the media, it's all pretty standard in here, except for the fact that I have added some uh, filter wool in there. I removed some of the other media and just put the filter wool in there. That looks like it's been doing a good job, but needs a change now. The black sponge is fine. Not a lot of debris stuck in there. That's because it's a bio media rather than an actual mechanical filter. The biological media looks fine again. And then the main mechanical filtration, which are the sponges, they are doing their job, trapping debris. Everything in here, again, is made from plastic. This is a red plastic. It's quite a soft plastic compared to the others. Breaks quite easily, but it's inside, so it doesn't really matter. And then we have a gray plastic, really flexible, really soft. So these aren't really built to take much abuse, but as long as you don't drop them or cut them, I'm sure they'll last for the length of the filter. So we'll just give it another little durability test just to see what weight it can take. Just for reference, I weigh 68 kilos. So we'll just give it a stand and we'll see if it can take me on it. Yeah, doesn't seem to be breaking because I do sometimes use filters as a kickstall sometimes. And then we'll just do it the other way just to see how durable this is. A little bit of flex in that. A little bit of flex, but yeah, it's, it's fine. You can use them as a stool if you want to. No, don't do that. So one of the most important things I look at when I am looking for a filter is actually how easy is it to maintain because some external filters can be really, really annoying. This one is not. I've already shown you how to open it. It's really easy to open it. Obviously the water stays in the pipe so we can prime it again really easily. And then the media itself comes out on this red holder and all you have really have to do is give it a quick rinse and stick it back in other filters you'll have layers of your sponges so if you want to clean the bottom layer you have to take everything out or if you've got a media in there you need to replace again you've got to take everything out just to access that one layer whereas here you've got that choice you can say i want to clean the sponges and you can leave the bio media in the canister or conversely you can do the opposite and leave the sponges in while you attend to your bio media so it's really simple um, and I found this is one of the sort of reasons why I recommend this filter to people. A lot of people who are buying a filter like this, it's probably one of their first um, big purchases for their aquarium. And they're looking for something that's really reliable, but also really easy to maintain. And that's what the Fluval is all about. These 07 filters, or the entire range going back to the 04 and 05 filters have always been about how uncomplicated it is to open them and maintain them. And that's what this filter is all about quick look at the pipe work it's obviously it's black so we're not going to have any algae build up on this pipe work on the inside unlike some other pipe work you can get on other brands which is clear or green you do end up getting a bit of algae build up which you don't get on this another thing that's changed is obviously the outlets and inlets are now black compared to the 206 which used to have clear ones which used to get quite dirty they're now black preventing that algae growth in terms of debris building up on the inside of these pipes, I have been told by a Fluval rep the reason they're ribbed is actually to prevent debris building up. So they're ribbed with a slight um, sort of spiral. And what happens is any water going through there goes in a spiral direction and that means it prevents dirt building up in these ridges. A lot of people think that dirt builds up in these ridges, uh, but actually the ridges are there to prevent dirt building up at all. So we'll just get this filter hooked back up again and it's really easy. You just put your pipes in there. Obviously the filter has to be empty to do this. You do that, that's the red lever. Then you do the yellow lever. A couple of pumps and the filter just starts filling on its own. You don't have to ram this up and down like you're used to. A couple of pumps and it's done. So on paper, actually, Fluval filters are probably the cheapest external filters you can get. They're very, very good value for money. If you compare this 207 to an equivalent filter by Awazi, the price is probably double, if not triple, on the Awazi than it is on the Fluval. Now, there's reasons for that. I mean, it, in general, German stuff, Eheim, Awazi, they're all higher build quality. 
they are more expensive they've got more fancy features so this has got a heater in it it's got a pre-filter in it all sorts of cool stuff it's obviously a little bit bigger it's got more media in it this one doesn't it's basic it has its media it does its job and it sits there quietly and that's what the flu rules are for so there's different budgets and different things if you want something really high tech with all the gizmos and gadgets then obviously you're going to be going for something like an awazi filter or you're going to be going for something like an eheim filter if you want something that just does its job doesn't need a lot of maintenance and when it does need maintenance is easy to maintain then you're going to want something like the fluval filter so in summary I think the Fluval 07 filters are excellent, they're well worth the money you pay for it which isn't a lot to be honest, definitely a better choice than any internal filter that you can get. So highly recommend them, you can see they're durable, they're reliable, this isn't a sponsored video, it's just my own thoughts of the 07 range of filters. If you have enjoyed this video then please leave a like and leave a comment if you disagree or if you've got anything else to add to this video or just want to say hi. I appreciate it. Also subscribe to my channel if you haven't already because there's more stuff like this to see and it's only going to get better. So thanks so much for watching and happy fish keeping.